Hi, my name is Anna, and I'm here to tell you about my experiences working with a group called the International Women's Peace Service, which is based in the West Bank, and basically we do two things. First of all, we're there to document human rights abuses in the region, and second of all, we're there to support nonviolent resistance to the occupation. And I'll be telling you more about what this occupation looks like in the presentation, but before I do so, just a little bit about myself. I'm a Jewish American, and I originally got into this work when I was living in Turkey, and I would take trips through the Middle East during my vacations. I was in Iran, in Syria, and Lebanon, and along my way I was taken in by families, many of them Palestinian refugees, and through my friendships with these people that I met along the way, I began to hear for the first time a whole different sort of version of the history and present of Israel and Palestine, utterly different from anything that I'd ever learned growing up as a Jewish American. And I was very disturbed, alarmed by what I heard. I didn't believe it. I thought it was all propaganda. But it sort of planted a seed, and I began to do some of my own research and eventually decided to go to Palestine to see with my own eyes what was happening. And that's when I took my first trip to Palestine. And that's what I'd like to tell you about is what I found when I got there. Um, I'm not here to give sort of a, a sweeping analysis of the entire history of the conflict. I'm not here to give every single perspective on the issue. I'm here to give my perspective as a Jewish American who spent five months working in the West Bank. Now, when I first got to Palestine, there were, of course, many sort of surprises along the way, but one of the first ones was just aesthetically the way Palestine looked. I guess I'd imagined the Middle East to be sort of rolling sand dunes, barren desert land. And when I got there, I realized that Palestine was actually very beautiful. This is a picture showing Palestine in the springtime. You can see how fertile and green the land is. But beyond showing how beautiful it is, I actually think that this photograph captures what I have come to believe is really at the heart of the Israel-Palestine conflict. A lot of people have sort of a, a perception of this issue as being kind of an, an age-old rivalry between Jews and Muslims, something that's been going on for thousands of years and will continue for thousands more because at its heart are these sort of deep religious differences. And one of the first realizations that I came to when I got to Palestine was that for the most part, this really is not a war about religion. This is a war about land, about water, about resources. And I hope that my reasons for coming to those conclusions will be clear in this presentation. Now to get you oriented, here's a map of the Middle East. Israel and Palestine are located in the Middle East, that tiny little purple and white sliver there. Here's a larger version of that map. And the beige areas in this map indicate the de facto internationally recognized borders of the State of Israel. Meanwhile, the pink areas on the right and left are the two land masses making up the Palestinian territories occupied in 1967. And they are on the left, the Gaza Strip, and on the right, the West Bank. And I was living in a town, in a village in the West Bank, and the photographs and stories from this presentation uh, were taken from the West Bank. So, as I said, these are known as the Occupied Palestinian Territories. Occupied, what does that word mean, right? Well, the, the purpose of my presentation is to tell you about this occupation. And the first part of my talk is just explaining the structures of the occupation. What is it composed of? I'll be talking about restricted movement, checkpoints, and roadblocks. I'll be talking about settlements and outposts. I'll be talking about the wall. And I'll be talking about imprisonment. And once we have sort of a general understanding about what the system itself looks like, I'll be talking about how are people reacting? How are people resisting? And the next part of my talk then will be about resistance. I'll be talking about everyday nonviolent resistance. I'll be talking in particular about demonstrations. And I have a section as well on Israeli activism. So to get started with restricted movement, 